and that would be Daryl Taylor. And he joins us now on the Stanley Fencing and Gates Hotline, a second round selection by the Seattle Seahawks. Daryl, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. How you doing today? Doing well. Appreciate you joining us here today, Eric Kane and Logan Ward, right here in Knoxville. Um, obviously, an exciting time for you. Your um, your life has changed the last couple of weeks. Uh, how was yeah. how has things been different for you? Things have been different for me. Um, no, not not much, just because of what's going on, but definitely different from a aspect of what level of football I'm going to be playing, uh, the type of money I'm going to be getting. And just being around a lot of great people at the same time. So I think my life has definitely changed uh, over the past few weeks. And I'm excited uh, on where I'm about to head with Seattle. Yeah, so Seattle selects you, um, dry, you know, moved up to get you in the second round. You know, there were rumors, you know, as late as, you know, leading up into Thursday that potentially you could have snuck into the first round. But Seattle goes up and gets you, made you a priority. Uh, initially, when you got that phone call, when you found out that Seattle was going to take you, your thoughts on Seattle and then just the uh, prospectus of uh, being a Seahawk for, for the future. Yeah, I love Seattle. I took my visit out there before all this quarantine stuff happened, and it was an, an amazing visit. <clears throat> and to have them trade up spots to get me is the most exciting thing I could ever wish for because I didn't think that they were going to do that. And I knew uh, Seattle might pick me because I knew that they loved me. But I definitely didn't think they were going to trade up. So when they traded up and I got that call, I was so excited um, to see uh, Seattle, Washington going across my phone. So I'm very excited about it. And I'm so overjoyed and amped to get out there and play uh, with Seattle and get to meet all the D-line and the rest of the staff and the team. VFL Daryl Taylor joining Saturday Sports Talk here on the Sports Animal, second-round draft pick by the Seattle Seahawks a couple weeks ago. And, and Daryl, you kind of touched base there about getting – uh, getting to you know the guys and learn from the guys. Have you reached out to guys like Bruce Irvin, maybe a, a high draft pick last year in LJ Collier, and, and 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 guys like that just to kind of pick their brains already early in the process? Did they reach out to you and congratulate you or anything like that? Yeah, we definitely talked. We um, had sessions and we uh, we're in a group message, so we talk to those guys and we uh, try to get as much from them as we can and um, ask any questions that we need, but. We get with our coaches and we ask questions too. So it's been um, it's going it's been going really good. Just being able to talk with those guys and uh, conversate, and I'm excited about it. Daryl, thanks for joining us, and I hope you and your family are doing okay during this crazy time. You know, I'm sure you've heard some stuff about the draft process. You know, leading up to you know your time at Tennessee. How much different was you know what you experienced with everything going on in the world compared? to what you heard leading up to the draft? Yeah, so <clears throat> it was pretty much what I expected. Um, a lot of hard work and stuff like that and just being able to take care of your body at a um, at a different kind of rate, like just being even more cautious about what you put in your body, uh, the way you work out and everything like that. So it's definitely been a, um, a different time, and it's, it was everything I was thought it was going to be the combine, senior bowl and everything, and being drafted. <clears throat> it was everything I thought it was going to be. And it was it was very, uh, it was a very surreal moment going through that process. But it's, it's a long process, but it's definitely uh, worth every minute and every second that you're putting in all that work and uh, talking to these teams and letting them get to know you. So Seattle traded up to uh, to get you. Did you know going into the draft that you know they really liked you and that they were looking at training up to get you, or did that kind of come as a draft day surprise to you? It came as a draft day surprise. I knew that they wanted me and uh, they were very interested interested in me, but I definitely didn't know that they would they would trade up just to get me. So that was very exciting to be in that. VFL Daryl Taylor joining us here on Saturday Sports Talk, the Sports Animal. Um, Daryl, I, I know that you try to keep your you know, your nose down. You just try to work, 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 and try not to to buy into any of the hype one way or the other. But you know, here in 2020, the you know land of social media and, and reporting going on, it's it's hard not to not to kind of have your ear, you know, listening to when your name's in the headlines. You were, you know, you were surging up draft boards. You were getting a lot of positive hype coming out of the combine and leading up to the draft. Did you pay attention to any of that? And if you did, how did you try to? you know, still stay focused and not buy into it too much? No, I didn't pay attention to it because, you know, these teams telling you what they know and then you hear all this stuff on social media. So it's two different things. So 
I just made sure I listened to what the teams tell me, uh, especially before the season. I, <clears throat> like, I listened to what the coaches tell me. What uh, When I got my uh, grade back, I tried to work on everything that I needed to work on. And um, I just made sure that I didn't listen to the hype. I just tried to keep my head off social media list, um, and listening to those stuff, I mean, those things. So um, I just made sure that I uh, didn't do that. And uh, I think it treated me well by getting picked in the second round. And, I'm just ready to get to work. So right now you should be in Seattle going through rookie minicamp. And you are going through rookie minicamp, but it's virtually. So how has that process gone? I would understand it. It's probably a lot of a lot of, you know, chop talk and learning the plays and, you know, video and stuff like that. But uh how is virtual rookie minicamp and, and nonetheless, how are you getting to kind of gel with your teammates, you know, via a video conference? Yes, yeah, this is definitely a different time. Uh, video calls are different and everything because you're not in person with the coaches, getting that that physical connection and stuff like that. So, um, but it's 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 not as bad as you would think it would be. It's it's actually pretty good because you get time to exercise your brain. You get time to help that muscle flex and 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 learning the playbook and asking all the questions you can possibly ask with the coaches and stuff like that. And I think it's just a great time for us to of like rookies to get in shape, prepare their bodies for the for what's about to come. So I think um that it's a different time, but we all can take advantage of it right now and doing everything possible to uh, get ready for the NFL. How is your health right now? We noticed, I mean, you you played your senior year with a stress fracture in your shin. Uh, you had to sit out the combine, but how are you doing health-wise and and on that road to recovery? Yeah, my health is going really great. My rehab is going great. Everything is um on the right road to recovery and uh it's all uh, going in in a great process and I'm making a lot of progress with my um leg so it's all going in the right direction Talking to a VFL Daryl Taylor here on Saturday Sports Talk Daryl I'm curious you know Tennessee last year you all ended on a very hot um, winning streak you know we're starting to see some of that pain off in recruiting what do you expect from coach Jeremy Pruitt and the Vols moving forward you know into rest of his tenure and into this year yeah, I expect big things from this year. They have they should have a really good recruiting class this year. I think that uh, Coach uh, Pruitt and his staff has been doing a great job in recruiting. They always been like that because <clears throat> when I was uh, with them, the two years I had, we did a lot of recruiting players, coaches. It didn't matter. Everybody had their hands in. Everybody was all in. So I think um, Coach Pruitt is a great recruiter, and the rest of the staff is going definitely. Um, probably be number two, number one recruiting class this year because they're doing a good job out there. I see that they're rising up the board every time I look on Twitter or something like that. So I think uh, I'm expecting big things from them this year, and I think they're going to do a really good job this season. How much did you enjoy your time in Knoxville? Oh, I love Knoxville. I still live there, so (laughs) um, I love Knoxville, man. It's been a great time. All the years that I had there, the five years I was there, my fifth year and everything, it was amazing. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Every moment and every up and down um, that I had there, all the ups and downs that I had there, I wouldn't trade it for nothing because it made me who I am <clears throat> coming out my fifth year as a fifth-year senior. And I'm just so excited about what Tennessee has done for me and very appreciative for them um, just being able to get me out there, man, because – uh, it's not easy, so I'm just excited about it. Just a couple more, Daryl, then we'll let you get on your way. You probably got some some mini camp stuff you got to get to via Zoom. Uh, <laughs> when um when you think back in your time in Tennessee, you know two different coaching um you know re- regiments, and you had you know Chris Rump, you had Tracy Rocker, uh you know you had uh, Jeremy Pruitt as your head coach, Derek Ansley as your coordinator. How thankful are you to have learned under those guys, and and how you know if you could kind of sum up how they you know positively affected your life, not only on the football field, developing you into a second round draft pick, but also you know Daryl Taylor, the man. Yeah, so those coaches definitely poured a lot into me as a player and as a man. Uh, definitely, I was uh, with Coach Rump a lot more because that was my position coach. Yeah, but he was like more like a father figure that. Um, was there for all outside linebackers and anything if we needed anything. And uh, I definitely love Coach Ron for that and always going to have his back and respect him for that because he was a great coach and a, a great person to me. As far as the coaching part, man, those are some of the best coaches I've ever met. They helped me get to this point, and I learned a lot of football with, 
with them uh, within the last two years that I was uh, at UT, and I learned a lot of football. So <clears throat> uh, I just thank them for everything they've done for me, and I can accredit my success to my high school coaches and to my college coaches. All right, last one, Daryl. We'll get you out of here. Uh, there's there's a void now on the edge of Tennessee's defense. Uh, you know, you where you've been, you know, you know, chasing down quarterbacks the last four years. On the roster right now, who do we need to expect to step up and fill that void you've left? I mean, you've got DeAndre Johnson, you've got Kevon Bennett, you got a couple of freshmen that are going to come in looking to make an impact. Who should Vol fans be on the lookout for in the backfield this season? I think you can be on the lookout for the whole defense. The defense, some of them are going to be young, but they got a lot of returning starters, especially on the D-line. Darrell Middleton, you still got um, Emmett Gooden and all those guys, and Kevon Bishop, DeAndre Johnson. All those guys are returning guys, so they know the defense. Yeah. So I think that you can look out for the, the definitely that defensive front because they're going to definitely do a lot of big things this year. Well, Daryl, thanks so much for joining us here. We appreciate the time you've taken away from your Saturday morning. Uh, congratulations again. I know our listening audience joins me in saying, uh, you know, proud of you. Congratulations. And we're looking Thank for uh, some big things in the future for you out in Seattle. Thank you, man.